Right, boys. So we've had all day. We've uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while, like putting some new mapping in the bike, and I've been raving about you know my experience with it. Um, out here at Josh Greens, we've had a really skatey, what would you call it, motocross sort of enduro loop, and then a real nice sort of trail loop. There's a lot of sort of stop-start stuff across the road, and including some really technical stuff and some hill climbs. So. Uh, I'm going to throw to you, Hammo. First of all, give us your top line, mate. What's uh, if you if you had a mate in the phone, you had 20 se or 10 seconds to tell him what you thought about, you know, what remapping uh, this FE 350 can do. Uh, what would you say? Well, certainly, um, it, it's a jump up for me going up to a 350. So, uh, the first thing, one of the things I notice is certainly a lot more power for me than I'm generally used to, but. The end, end result for me was a much more lineal, usable power. Um, the mapping gave it the good power right throughout the range. Good, drivable, tractable power. Okay. What well, was your uh, immediate takeout, or you know, yeah. what you sort of took out of the day? I think for me, the biggest thing was I felt more connected with the bike. Kind of, you were more what you put into the bike with throttle, kind of directly translated more. There wasn't any weird lags or anything that. To be fair, I didn't realise there was lag on a 350 or anything like that in the past. But jumping on this thing today, not only was more fun, but it was easier to ride, less fatiguing, and it had more go when you twist the throttle. Yeah, it was funny, you know, I mean, obviously I had the 19 bike and the, and the 20, so me being able to compare back to back as a project bike was sort of easier. And I think, uh, you know, when we did some a really snotty, loamy hill climb, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and mm -hmm. I realised on the number one map, I was, the thing was falling off the power, and I had to use the aggressive map to sort of keep it on the, in the meat of the power up the hills. I uh, noticed going back to back with a mate who'd, who'd had some remapping work done on a, on a 350 that just in that stop start stuff it just it just had that hesitation coming on the power particularly yeah. when you point and shoot stuff coming around downhills and then pointing back up and going uphill again so mm. yeah for me you're right I think that that lack of lag the the instantaneous um, nature of the power um, but the I think the biggest thing for me and I think I've said it to you blokes yeah you, you don't realize how much you're actually using the power to control the bike so when we're over here and you know you go from those ruts and you can't remember the track because we don't know it yeah. so you kind of like you know you quite often get halfway around and you've got it wrong you're using the throttle to sit it up yeah. or lay it down and that dictates your lines you know almost much more than the you know how much power there is so having that instantaneous power allowed you to do that did you guys sort of, sort of find that at all yeah look the, the other thing about the bike i it allowed me to grab a extra gear up yeah. so i could mm -hmm. ride it um in a lot more smoother manner than you know there wasn't that jerkiness it was just smooth all the way through definitely yeah yeah i'd have to agree like before i was going second and third around the tracks here today but by the end you could just lug third around well this the skatey one the here and even the type stuff, bush here. stuff yeah. yeah even the type bush stuff because it is super skatey out there today yeah. yeah i was on other bikes and i was spinning up everywhere and i jumped on this i was like probably the first time i've jumped on a four stroke and after more than a two stroke well, it's funny because I think we went out this morning and you know we got straight onto a skatey track and I'm like mm. Jesus Christ if there's ever a point where you don't want more throttle response and snap I'm like this is going to be worse than ever because it's not going to showcase the benefit of mm. you know, having a snappier punchier mm. map but like you said you could suddenly okay you got more meat in the power that comes on lower at smaller throttle opening so you short shift the thing so I was riding third in some of this tight stuff I'd never think about riding on a 350 it felt like a 450 I was pretty amazed actually by that and because I'm not tap dancing on the gear lever all day going between second and third I could draw smoother lines you just you're rolling on out of a corner rather than figuring out where you're going to shift and yeah. break and traction so you know contrary to what I thought my concern is actually it was kind of a lot better Definitely. riding around you know more throttle response more punch but better around a skatey track it sort of sounds counterintuitive but yeah, but it worked. yeah, yeah. no it definitely definitely worked and and the thing just felt smoother all the way through the range rather than you know and, and particularly over those little nasty tree roots yeah. where before you know if you were a little bit late you gave it you cracked on the throttle it immediately responded and, and sort of lifted you over and punched yeah. you into where you wanted to be as opposed to hitting the thing you know it was, and get it was away with less less clutch to do yeah. that yeah, yeah. No, it was good. I was impressed. I had a couple of flame outs. Uh, you know, I know with the motocross bikes, even the cross country bikes, the mapping, you know, you take them in the bush and they got taller gearing and you flame out a lot coming in the corners. Let's get it settled and go, Pah! you know, and then you stick your leg down and twist something. Had a little bit of that with the standard mapping. I reckon it's pretty bloody good. Mm. Um, but I know that, um, you know, you had a little bit of that early, but mm. nothing once you put the, the updated maps in. Once we got it in, it was sweet. I yeah. found that I could carry more speed into corners. Like, Every that track over there is like rut after rut for about 10 minutes. 
I could come in with less less on the clutch so I'm not coming in and dumping it out and being real jerky. So I come in with more speed and just use the throttle because it was so predictable to flow around the corners more. So here's the obvious question, right? We're all sitting here, you know, blowing wind up the ass for how good this new map is, right? It's mm. probably if you go to your dealer who's got to use the setting tool and is proficient and mm. a good tuner, three hundred bucks and it's yours. Do you know what I mean? You don't see yeah. anything different, it's not a bolt on, it's not a thousand dollar muffler, and yet the you know, the benefit is like I'd argue, you know, more than what a muffler gives a thing with yeah. a bolt on at a further price. So why aren't people doing it? Uh, I, th I think it's the knowledge, yeah. Andy. You know, generally, most most times, um, you know, I'm, I consider myself an all-round kind of punter rider. And when you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of people don't know what what can be done, and they uh, go after the immediate things, pipes and and all sorts of other things to create horsepower, but generally horsepower's n not your best friend in, unless it's usable and tractable. And yeah. certainly the bikes, the, the later model that they get, the technology that's involved, it, it, it's, it's all about the mapping really, uh, suspension and mapping. So for me, it was a kind of no-brainer. It, it just definitely smoothened the whole bike out. And, and the more people know about it, um, you know, the, the, they feel a bit more comfortable going and trying these things and, and, yeah. and getting involved in it. Well, I've been pretty, uh, I'm going to even say it, excited by the whole mm. prospect of mucking around this mapping mm. today. Um, you know, I soon realised looking with, with Rob Pyrrell that, you know, it was way beyond me. It's a professional, um, the user setting tool is a professional uh, tuning tool at the moment, but, you know, it makes me, like, I'm stinging to get my hands on this uh, Mike ADM map, which, you know, suddenly is a is a consumer friendly tool. You know, you got a, you got an app, you're dialing, you know, tra yeah, traction, yeah. Um, engine braking, um, you know, throttle response up and down. Like yeah. that's that's going to be pretty cool to be able to have an opportunity to do that. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. It's been mind blowing. And and uh, I guess uh, once KDM or, or Husqvarna give you those opportunities, they're going to make sure they set <coughs> set the parameters too. And and you know when we use a tool like that you can understand that you're not going to do any damage mm. um, all you're going to yeah, do is ver point. vary the curve whereas <laughs> when you've got a guy like rob churning and saying well he can take you right to the other end of the spectrum um, so that that sort of tool will give people the confidence to use it without yeah. knowing that, that, that there's no damage to be done to the bike and how much just so happens that uh, you're buying this bike so yeah. no wonder you came out here today to have a bit of a crack in the thing mate and now yeah. it's what would you say? Twenty percent better power, and uh, you know what you're working with. You just yeah, gotta throw some softer suspension in it now, mate. Yeah, no. Um, I, history tells you, Andy. I've, I've bought a, a few bikes out of the uh, the test bikes, and I've been happy with all of them so yeah, far. And I've stuck, Moto stable. Yeah, and I've <laughs> stuck with the Husqvarna. So uh, stepping up into the 350 is going to be a lot of fun, and, and um, certainly the mapping did make a big difference. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, you mm. had a ball in the thing, mate. Yeah, thanks.